first thing I say to people to do before you diet, before you go on an exercise regime, do your lymphatic work to ensure your waste out system is working because as soon as you start to drop body fat and toxins into your bloodstream, they've got to get out. So where lymphatic system became trendy from an aesthetical point of view is it moves fluids. Harley, welcome to my kitchen. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So nice to have you here. I'm really excited to talk all things lymph, lymphatic drainage. So do you mind giving a quick elevator pitch, who you are and what you do? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so I'm Carly. Um, I've been in the wellness and fitness industry since I was 17. I'm 41 now, so quite a long time. I call myself a gladiator. <laughs> um, so I started off uh, using exercise as a way to help uh, with kind of anger, aggression. I had a lot of energy when I was younger and um, I was doing boxing. I became Essex number one indoor tennis champion. Wow. Um, but actually all of that competition um, got my nervous system quite hyped up early and I used to have a lot of nosebleeds, um, which is obviously now I look back, it's like a huge sign of stress. Um, but being competitive and then being good at it, you, the stress actually builds up, which is what a lot of people experience in life. They kind of get successful and they everyone panics about sustaining that that level of success or who they are and everyone, no one is allowed to change. So we kind of get trapped in, in our success. And that happened to me quite early on. Um, and then I started to use exercise, like diff search for different exercises that was allowing me to calm down a little bit. So I ended up studying yoga at a really young age, um, went off to India and did a lot of that work at a young age, uh, breath work, uh, meditation, and these contrasts of kind of aggressive boxing, which was good for me at some point, but then I turned to slowing down and calming down. And this was kind of where my journey began. Um, I then, at some point kind of felt like there was still this residual kind of tension in my body. So I used to get a lot of neck pain, shoulder pain. Um, and I thought it was potentially kind of inflammation, poor recovery. So I then started looking at nutrition, studied nutrition, looked very much, it, lots of different types of diets and lots of different methodologies in how to eat for inflammatory responses, pain, self-soothing, um, why we eat, the comfort eating aspects. And that kind of took me down a bit of a rabbit hole. Um, and I was very, uh, then realized that the nutrition was also playing a role in inflammation and recovery and my sleep. So that was something that I was shouting about to people a lot. Um, and then again, as I got a little bit older, this combination of movement, breath work and uh, nutrition, it was, I still didn't feel like I could kind of, was at peace because I got older, lots more responsibilities. I'd, I've run businesses and there was just this, I, I couldn't, I can't only describe it as just, I just always kind of was, had tension. And it's something that you make peace with kind of where like that book, like the body keeps score. You know, I've, I had a quite a kind of up and down childhood. We moved quite a lot. There was a lot of kind of like fear, anxiety. So then you kind of realize, oh, maybe some of this stuff is just kind of moving around in my body. Um, and so I'd go for like chiropractic massages and they would feel great for a moment. Um, and then this kind of pain and tension would come back. Um, and there's a bit of that thing, you know, when someone's kind of like a little bit like this, I'm very guarded anyway. And people was always say to me, put your shoulders down, relax. And I'd, if someone touched me that I didn't know, I'd kind of react. Um, so it kind of took me on a bit of a journey to work. I was, I was getting quite frustrated because obviously I was paying out quite a lot of money for treatments, but yet I wasn't really, it I was feeling better for a moment, but then the same things were coming back and that irritates me to a point and then also get quite irritated that I can't self-soothe, that I can't self-regulate because it doesn't make sense to me to go and have to pay other people to be calm mm. or to feel better. And I actually don't like attaching myself to any one thing that I need. 
Um, so I went back because I'd done so many courses just because I like doing courses. My friends always say to me, if someone gave you 20 grand, Carly, what would you spend on? You don't like anything. And they're like, oh yeah, courses. <laughs> <laughs> so it used to be trainers, but it's just courses. Just and courses. I just love learning. It stimulates my mind. Um, I'm very introverted. I like to think on things and I've always just been interested in how the body works, wellness, um, and my own self evolvement. Um, so I went back to a couple of courses I'd done in lymphatic work, but I found that the courses that I'd done were just kind of te- like with a lot of massage treatments or people will experience going to a massage therapist. They've really not been told much about why they're doing it. They've just gone on a short course to learn to kind of go and do it on someone else. But it almost like is like them teaching them a dance routine rather than an understanding of what and why they're doing things. And I'm that person that goes, but why? But why? Mm. <laughs> um, so I I basically kind of took apart a lot of the courses that I'd done and went back to my physiology, how fluids move in the body, the connection between nervous system, blood flow, and how everything links together. Um, and then started to build my own program from there. And actually wasn't until I started looking at, again, this is like a kind of trendy word at the moment, like the root cause. But when I think about the root cause, it's like, okay, if the muscles are tight and tense, what that's saying is there's poor blood flow to the area. Where is the blood flow coming from that supports the back of the body? And that's in the front. Mm. So if there's an issue here, there's an issue here. And so if this, now if I press the front of my body and that's tight and tense, how the hell is the back gonna get better? And it always comes back to, we have to do the work in understanding why I keep accumulating tension there. Like what's going on in my life? What am I choosing that is repetitively causing these things? And how do I change my my life setup in order to kind of self-regulate? And it is kind of that deep because a lot of people are around people that aren't healthy for them. I mean, there's there's so many things that can unearth from that, not just, oh, I'm interested in lymphatic work and someone just give me a treatment and lymphatic is amazing. It's like so much deeper than that. <laughs> yeah, completely. It's so interesting your discovery and your journey to lymphatic because I think I can really relate with kind of the high intensity workouts and you kind of thought, if I'm not jumping up and down, sprinting around, like I'm not gonna like be fit and I'm not gonna like be the healthiest version the fittest version of myself and although that's great and I love running and I love all of that it does end up putting like strength like st- like stress on your body mm-hmm. and it can cause inflammation and actually the slower things and the things that you might think are pointless such as kind of slow massaging of the body is actually so beneficial but you sometimes have to go through the thinking of the most high intensity must mean the best outcome, which although it has a great outcome and that's also really good, you do have to do the slow things as well to kind of balance it out. Yeah, and I also think at different times in our lives, like for instance, when I was younger and I had more energy and less responsibility, that actually serves a purpose because Mm. it's channeling energy in a in a positive direction but then if your life all of a sudden change and you take on a lot more responsibility all of a sudden you're getting that high intensity or aggression outlet somewhere else mm. so therefore your balancing yourself out needs to look at like well if i'm really hyper and stressed at work maybe doing that same thing at the gym isn't applicable anymore and, mm. and it keep and it might keep changing and we're very We're very adaptable as human beings, but we're also really don't like change. Mm. But in actual fact, we should be constantly taking inventory of what we actually need. So if I'm in a very stressful time in my life, that's maybe not the best time to do high intensity training. But then again, I might have a quiet, relaxing time in my life. And then it's a good time to do that. If so, I find different personalities. If you've got a very relaxed character, super calm, you know, they are they actually need to kick up the arse and to mm. do some hit training and if you get someone who's very hyper very high energy they they'll often say i hate yoga yeah right? because we're always gravitating to what is in our natural setting but in actual fact to grow we need to look at this actually i need to sit in things for a reason because we'll always kind of hit a wall and get stuck 
and it'll always be like the choices we make and we kind of get frustrated with where we're at but we're also mm. not willing to kind of step outside of our comfort zone right because our brain is generally wired to be quite lazy and repetitive yeah. so we need to kind of train it constantly yeah it's so true you think like I'm a Pilates girl I'm a runner like mm-hmm. you go through different chapters in your life and yeah. you can be all of those things like mm-hmm. I love hit I love spinning I love running I love Pilates I like yoga like I do it all but you're right I think it's there's a time and a place for each of them which is so interesting so I have a lot of questions about lymphatic (laughs) before we get into all that (laughs) we have a quick fire round about all things food just to kind of kick things off so cook in or eat out eat out (laughs) what is your favorite restaurant in London um I like sticks and sushi Mm, good one what's your go-to delivery I don't use Deliveroo actually. I'm neither, not and I love it when people me. say that. I'm like, yeah. neither, neither. I mean, I would get groceries on there, but yeah, um, yeah it's just not for me. Yeah. If I'm in, I'm then I'm and I haven't. I'm gonna cook. Yeah, yeah. I'm so. <laughs> it's always a letdown, unless I was about to say, unless you have a plan with a friend and it's like, let's come over and get Deliveroo. Yeah. But even then, I probably would cook with them instead. So yeah. yeah, I'm with you. Um, <laughs> Go to cuisine. Um, what for like home or like in general? Just in general. I like Japanese, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, go to fridge or cupboard staple, which isn't the basics. Um, go to, what well, I've, I've been eating loads of seaweed randomly. Oh my God, and yeah. And then I started making like vegetarian or vegan, like, because I actually did a course in how to do sushi. So then mm. I, I've gone down the... And I had loads of seaweed randomly in it's my It's so good. I love it. Like the nori sheets. Yeah. I love m- yeah. blending it with chickpeas and yeah. making like a chickpea tuna. Oh, that's good. Okay, really good. Cool. And what's your favourite dish to cook at home? Um, I'm really boring. It'll be like what I call bro food. I was a, I was like a, a past like bodybuilding freak. So I literally would just be like rice, meat, hardly any vegetables. <laughs> bro food. Bro food. <laughs> love it. <laughs> okay. For those who don't know, what is a lymphatic drainage massage? Yeah, it's um, lymphatic drainage is basically about moving water effectively. But if I say what, I feel like it's kind of become a buzzword, but no one knows what it is. So the lymphatic system is actually part of your circulatory system. So it's kind of not a made up trend, it is an actual thing. So if you think about the our blood circulation, so everyone's quite aware that the heart pumps blood around the body. And in blood, we've got a lot of plasma. We've got around five liters of blood in the body and then there's lots of plasma in there. And plasma, as it goes from thick arteries to little capillaries, it starts to leak. So our blood is quite leaky. So that plasma that leaks out of the blood is called then interstitial fluid and it's sitting in between our cells and our tissues. Now, if our lymphatic system didn't come and help that system out, we'd actually die in like two days. So from blockages from this interstitial fluid just sitting in our tissues and cells and it needs to be recirculated back into our circulatory system but because the blood is leaky the body has also designed this interstitial fluid and then our lymphatic system lymph valves come and collect that interstitial fluid around three liters a day leaks out in our body Wow! so if we don't pick that up and it's a one-way valve this lymph valve so it doesn't allow for backflow and it pushes the this fluid back up to our circulatory system to then it come goes back to being plasma so it's plasma interstitial fluid into lymph but it's part of your circulatory system and it's part of your immune system so what your blood does is get blood to all, all of your whole body quite quickly the lymphatic system on that journey back to your heart effectively it stops off at lymph nodes and those lymph nodes are clearing and cleaning that fluid so but viruses bacteria cancers all of those type of things now if your lymphatic system is operating at 80 percent what's going to start to happen is you're going to be a little bit swollen and a little bit puffy you're also subjective to more disease more virus more illness because there's toxic substances in your body so if you think about a big huge fish tank under the fish tank is loads of filters and those filters need to be cleaned out because otherwise what happens to the fish tank so if you don't clean the fish tank it starts to get really like icky in there Mm -hmm. 
And the fish might be like, <gasps> there's like low oxygen in here. Yeah, it's and killing then the Finding fish, Nemo when they're exactly, in the tank. <laughs> then the fish would die, right? What we do in our society is medicate the fish to live in a dirty tank. Now, the lymphatic system, if we just cleaned that out, our pipes, we don't necessarily need the medication. So where lymphatic system became trendy from an aesthetical point of view is it moves fluids. And what we're doing is moving those fluids along so that we end up basically our waste out systems, which is our kidneys to pee out, poo, digestion, skin, breath, yeah? so. What lymphatics doing as a massage is it's moving fluids to the lymph nodes or pumping out of the lymph nodes to the organs so that you end up peeing out the waste. This episode is sponsored by Zuki. If like me, you're interested in supplements and love to feel your best, then you need to try Zuki's range of liposomal supplements. They have been clinically proven to provide four times the amount of absorption compared to conventional supplements, which means you feel the benefits faster. They also come in a delicious single serve sachet, which means you can look forward to taking your supplements every day. My current favorite is vitamin B12, which tastes just like strawberry. If you're interested in trying Zuki, they have given all catch up listeners a chance to receive a free taster pack. This includes vitamin C, D, B12, collagen, and turmeric. To receive your free pack, click the link in the show notes. Thank you so much, Suki, for sponsoring the podcast. Now let's get back to the episode. Amazing. That's... So some people will have a massive result from lymphatic drainage because they've got a lot of fluid sitting around. So someone and other people might go, oh, I didn't feel that much because a lot of people who say someone's overweight and they go, I want to do a lymphatic drainage because I'm going to get smaller. That doesn't work because it doesn't move fat. So a lymphatic massage wouldn't move fat. But if you've got excess water in your system that you will feel lighter from because you'll end up after the treatment peeing or pooing more because what we've done is give you a deep gut massage, which isn't lymphatic massage. Most really good lymphatic massages will do lymphatic drainage plus a gut maneuver. And the gut maneuver is gonna make you go to the toilet. The lymphatic is gonna move fluids. And why can't some people's bodies do that naturally and some bodies can? Yeah, well, uh, for instance, so when waste builds up in the system, so again, if your lymphatic system is operating at 80%, 60%, everyone's is operating, otherwise we'd die. Um, but ultimately a sluggish lymphatic system would be the fact that you're taking in too many toxins. So signs of that would be fatigue, poor skin, not going to the toilet. What you've got is a load of waste sitting in your body and your body will actually make more fat cells to store toxins in your system to protect your internal organs. So some people are like, I've been dieting and trying to exercise and I just can't lose weight. They probably are correct because what's happened is the body doesn't trust the system that if we start releasing fat cells into the bloodstream to get out they can't get out so your brain's like there's no way i'm letting you lose weight because it's not safe because the to get fat out of our system it needs to be dropped into our bloodstream in order for us to breathe it out to pee it out to poo it out to sweat it out now if if you're not doing any of those things you're not going to the toilet regularly you're not hydrated how is those toxins going to get out of your system? Instead, they stay into your bloodstream. And that's what happens when people do dieting. They do it five or six days and they go, I feel terrible. And what that is, is the toxins in your bloodstream. And then they quit and they eat a McDonald's. They go, I feel better. Because what you've done is you've halted the process of breaking down toxins in your system. So it's kind of the first thing I say to people to do before you diet, before you go on an exercise regime, do your lymphatic work to ensure your waste out system is working because as soon as you start to drop body fat and toxins into your bloodstream, they've got to get out. And that's why people suggest that if you're gonna diet, you should also exercise because what happens, you breathe more. So whether you don't like doing HIIT training, you need to do a breath work class, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. If you don't like sweating, you need to go and sit in a sauna. So you don't want to sweat in a spin class, cool, get in the sauna and sweat. So your waste out systems need to be checked first. If you don't breathe, there's no point in you dieting. It's just gonna get harder and harder and harder. And you'll quit. And that's why people end up bigger, fatter, more depressed, because they're just accumulating toxins. But we'll also know this from a perspective as a lot of people say, 
oh, I'm very achy, I'm tense, my muscles hurt. And the, the wave, and that's our nervous system and our muscles and our tissue requires oxygen. So if there's lots of blockages in the body, it's going to stop the blood flow getting around to the body. So now we're starved, like the fish in the dirty tank, our system is actually starved of oxygen. And so your nerves get super pissed off when they don't, well, I'd say pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> your nerves get really annoyed when they don't have oxygen. And therefore, as a protective mechanism, your body will clamp you down. Because if you start overstretching, it thinks they're gonna pull a muscle and we can't get in there to recover. We haven't got enough blood flow to recover. So all of a sudden, someone gets tight and tense, not for no reason, just because of a, the, your brain is actually doing the right thing for you. Okay. So there's like so many things going on. Yeah, so many things. Yeah. And how do we make sure our body's lymphatic system is working at its optimum? Yeah. Is it just by using it and like stimulating it? The or first, are there other lifestyle things that you can do? I think the first thing for people to look at and they're super basic is, are they hydrated? Because mm -hmm. if you're not hydrated, nothing's gonna work. So it, it is, and a lot of people are dehydrated. So I have to say to people, if they come for a treatment with me, at least three days before, I'm gonna give them a hydration protocol, sometimes up to seven days, because your treatment won't be effective. So that's On a hydration, huge... is hydrated two liters a day? Uh, what's your yeah I'm kind of anywhere between two and three liters but ultimately it's like are you peeing kind of a light yellow mm -hmm. and there's a lot of uh, urine charts that you can get on find on google and you want to look for that so you might be having lots of hydrating food doesn't necessarily that you have to drink water but you're looking at your pee basically mm -hmm. Um, and are you peeing anyway? You know, if you're going six hours and you don't go to the toilet, that's not necessarily a great mm -hmm. thing. Um, and then it's, are you pooing? You know, this is, we don't, you know, your poo shouldn't really smell. You shouldn't be, if you're living with someone or something, it, this is a sign. We shouldn't have really pungent smells in our poo. You should just smell a little bit like poo, the same mm -hmm. way as if we had pasta and Italian we would smell a little bit of garlic or something you know mm. non-offensive um and then we need to move in some way because like unlike the heart it has a pump right a pump the lymphatic system doesn't have a pump and it's actually relying on us to move and mother nature cleverly put loads of lymph nodes in our major joints of our body so shoulders chest hips all places that we would move to stimulate it to move lymph along breathing our diaphragm is a muscle and this is the biggest pump in the body so the biggest lymph node in the body sits just above our belly button called cisterna chile and this pump is like a, what you would call a like a plunger in a toilet it's going mm -hmm. so if you don't breathe diaphragmatically you're not utilizing this pump in your body so breathing becomes an issue so there's these like real fundamental basic movement it could be stretching uh, is your diaphragm you know i could push into someone's diaphragm they're like oh my god it's tight right it's tight tight and tension means poor blood flow then we've got our organs sitting underneath our rib cage there are essentially like brita filter waters for our blood you know we need these organs need to move and you know, Eastern medicine is their whole concept is on the link between organs and health. So it, it's actually just thinking about, are we doing the basics? And a lot of people aren't. A lot of people come to me for treatments and I go, we can't really carry on doing treatments because you're missing these elements. So my job becomes pointless and you turning up paying me, no matter how much money you're paying me, I don't want to do the treatment anymore mm -hmm. because we've hit a wall, like a relationship, it's done. Yeah. <laughs> so unless you're willing to do some other things we can't progress mm. so interesting so obviously you've got the lymphatic drainage massage you've got the things you can be doing generally and what about like the tools and things you can do at home to help stimulate yeah. the, the first thing i like to do with people is what i call i i teach a class online and i teach some classes in person and it's what i call like an insight I, my treatments are called kind of insight treatments and an, it's like an assessment of your body. 
and what a lot of so our brain is like dealing with so many issues and we're actually aware of only about 10 percent of them we're so unaware and i found when i did treatments with people i was some people i'd press into and i'd say on palpation is this tender and they'd be like oh my god that's so tender like they didn't know so until we press into somewhere we don't know so if i press into here and you'll go it's tight and tense what does that mean there's poor blood flow there so if there's poor blood flow in there's poor waste out so poor lymph nerves are irritated so already we've understood that there's poor blood flow here and this is the main drain this is where everything wants to drain to so if this is tight how the hell is your feet and your legs going to be lean and thinner they're going to likely be puffy mm. because there's a backlog of toxic substances that can't move so when people go into those leg boot things right yeah. but they've got poor guts and poor lymph here tightness and tension here it's completely a waste of time so they get into the gym they go straight onto the little and put their legs in there and they're on their phones and literally they haven't done anything on their neck they they probably have eaten loads of unhealthy salty food all day they probably haven't drank enough water and it's just gonna be a waste of time but the reason i don't come down on anything or say anything's bad in a because a lot of the time if that's making you feel relaxed what you're doing is beneficial true so this is this now from a nervous system system perspective we can't be stressed and recover so stress is good chronic stress isn't good so prolonged stress isn't great and we need to find a way to it's great to be stressed because that's stimulating our brain we also need to know how to switch off and pe the best people that are thriving and healthy can operate really well in the day get home relax mm. and this is now so some people i would need a shift to relax and this is where so from going back to what we said so the 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 first thing I like for people to do is do an assessment on themselves or it's something I do. And there's, I go from a range of six to 19 spots in the body and I'm pressing into those spots to, to get a reaction. With, we, it's not me making things up. I'm pressing into this area, what do you feel? And of course you could press so deeply that anywhere in the body would hurt, but we just wanna press a normal amount and is it tender? If it is, right, okay, we work that area. But there's, in lymphatic health and infl working your lymphatic system, unlike a normal massage, there's a system and an order in which you always have to work. So based on fluid flow, so the, the way that fluids move in the body, there is an order and a system and you cannot go, there's no change in that. Mm -hmm. So when people do body brushing, they start from their feet, it doesn't, it cannot work. So normal massage, if you went in and said, could you just rub my back? doesn't matter with lymphatic work so if someone's going for a lymphatic massage it should always start at the collarbones mm -hmm. if someone's going for a facial and the facial starts it they should actually open up the collarbones first mm -hmm. so there's this whole thing where a good therapist will also understand the drainage roots or the fluid roots of the body to give the most beneficial effect especially for it lasting long term but we have to assess ourselves or we have to have someone before they do a treatment give us an assessment because we have to understand and also some people this is where a uh, nervous system dysregulation comes in that's kind of quite a key kind of topic at the moment is that if i caressed my body uh, caressed my face really lightly this is the nervous system bacinium and merkel and they'll pick up on oh this feels nice so if someone did that to you but some people can't feel, they're like oh, kind of a little bit. So that's straight away telling me you've got a nervous system issue. And it doesn't matter if you, if you, you might say I've got, can you work my stomach because I'm bloated. But if I do this and you can't feel it, there's a nerve, we're, the nervous system is slightly shut down. You know when people go into like freeze mode or if someone got attacked, some people that like, oh, I would expect myself to scream or go mad and they go inward. Mm. So there's this thing of like, actually, are you, can you feel things on your body? And are you shut down to it? Because when I first started doing treatment, some people was very receptive to me touching them and other people, they'd gone somewhere else. And I never used to let people 
sleep or relax I said you've got to tune into what I'm doing Mm -hmm. and then the next step is for you to do what I'm doing because I often when I first started I wanted people just to do the work on themselves not me touch them but so many people were so unaware of their body or so unsure I kind of had to go back and go let me do it on you five or six times then we're going to start so then when they started they were like oh I know you do it in like rubbing moving tissue and then they got it from me touching them but trying to explain it people was like not happy with touching they were Mm. like this is this I'm so uncomfortable with this and we're so uncomfortable with our bodies it's let alone if we don't like certain parts how can you imagine how shut down they are Mm. and then we expect our body to work for us yeah that is so so true you've got to kind of be in tune and like be able to touch yourself yeah which actually people don't really and that's do that. just from a sensory perspective yeah that as people get older and you, we all know older people and they start to lose this is where that notion of phantom limb comes in when someone's had a leg chopped off but the brain is still searching for that limb and people go i've still got an itch on the leg that's gone mm. that's your nerves that's the that's the signals of where is that because your body your brain doesn't know where your hand is we're saying that's where my hand is or if i want to move my middle finger that's I'm movement Mm. but as you get older that connection starts to get weak because Mm. we're not really utilizing like eye movements basic movements and so they we don't look you don't work them and therefore then we lose them this is all our this all starts with can you is this numb Mm. and this is where I studied acupuncture and Chinese medicine and this is where then the meridian lines come in because all of a sudden I'll stick one, I don't stick lots of needles in people, I'll stick one needle in, sometimes superficially, sometimes deep, because now your whole brain should be going, oh my God, oh my God, there's something there, there's something there, and now that signal is gonna gonna go to my hand, so I've put a needle in here, everything is going there, like it doesn't know that it's a pin, a knife, it doesn't know, it's just get there now with all the inflammatory responses and recovery responses, and then it goes, oh, okay, guys, it's not that big a deal. Let's back off. Mm. But what we've done is we've worked that circuit to go, something's going on there. Can you respond to that? Mm. And and so it's like we're doing all of these things simultaneously. And that's where self-touch becomes so powerful in where where am I in my body? Where am I? Mm. What what where where keeps getting tight? Where where do I hold my breath when if someone makes me feel uncomfortable? What does my body do? Mm. And we've we've forgotten all of these things. And it sounds silly when people people go to me, oh, what are you doing? You're just rubbing your shoulder. And I'm like, yeah, until you spend a little bit of time with me, you won't get it. Yeah. You know? It is so fascinating. And we're going to do um, a little session after this. But just before that, if people want to stimulate their lymphatic system at home, mm-hmm what should they be doing? Because I feel like there's obviously a lot of areas you can be working, but in terms of like a manageable, at home, part of your routine, what do you recommend people doing? Yeah, so that's what we can show Mm -hmm. in this. Um, There's like six basic points in the body that can be just touched and it can take 10 minutes. Fine, okay. Um, And I can teach, you're you're kind of going to look on your nervous system, your blood flow and your lymph work. And the first thing to do is just to get comfortable with what all of those things feel like. Because mm. it is, I mean, and also I have an online class that does it a lot slower over a longer period of time. So you can kind of like sink into it. Fine. Um, okay. And then I teach a class in Islington, which people can come to. Mm. Um, and it's just like, first of all, everyone's eyes are on me. Like, what is she doing? Am I doing it exactly right? Am I doing... yeah. And it's like, it doesn't it doesn't exactly matter what you do in the area. It matters the order that which you do. So if you, I think you said about tools. So some people love like vibration balls and it doesn't matter what you do, body brushing, but the order in which you do it is lymphatic. God, I wonder if my order's correct. We'll <laughs> definitely do that in the, in the next clip. So we mentioned stress. How does stress impact our lymphatic system? Yeah. And it's more to do with our nervous system. So you're talking about a sympathetic and a parasympathetic nervous system. And to be in, so you've got fight and flight, which is basically your body going, we can't think about anything else right now because we're in survival mode. And some people are just chronically there, so that becomes normal, right? And then you've got a parasympathetic state, rest and digest. So we can't do anything for the body in a sympathetic state. 
So we have to at some point get out of a par- into a parasympathetic state. And this comes down to maybe sleep, for example. They only discovered probably about six, eight years ago that your brain has its own lymphatic system called glymphatic system. And your brain drains mostly at night. And they've only just found this out because before when they used to dissect bodies, they used to drain the fluids from the bodies, then go in. And it wasn't until like science and new things, they can actually see this additional fluid. And that's been linked again with Alzheimer's, dementia, this waste because it's brain waste. So this recovery aspect is huge, right? But how we go about that is really personal to us because what makes you feel relaxed? Who makes you feel relaxed? Who makes you feel stressed? And we have to start, some people will thrive. You know, when they say like comedians, some comedians will thrive, another comedian's gonna kill himself because he's depressed. It's like, mm. it does that comedian should have maybe been working in a florist and not been a comedian. Mm. And it's really, something that I've dealt with a lot over the years because I've been a coach for so long and a trainer and and it's really about bringing yes I'm highlighting things for you but it's really a lot of your own work that needs to be done and you can't come to me and I solve all your problems that's why I say to people a lot because I felt like I was carrying everyone on my back at one point because I'm trying to say well which people do because we're in a sales world, you know, come and do my treatment and you'll feel amazing. And it's like, Mm -hmm. you will, but you've also got to do a lot of work because it's not one element. It's looking at your whole life going, I like, you know, I'm supposed to be doing this job, but does it actually suit me? Someone will thrive in being a trader. Another person will turn to drugs and alcohol because they can't actually cope. Mm -hmm. And this is a lot about where, what, what we can do. You know, it's like you might thrive in spinning classes. Another person will be shattered from it. So it's like, there's no point in keep going and trying to force yourself. You need to find how to breathe, how to sweat for you at any given time. And it may be changeable. And that's quite a lot. That's not very, I can't really sell that. Yeah. (laughs) There's no supplement. There's no, and this is the thing with stress. It's like stress is going to cause tightness and tension. Tightness and tension is poor blood flow. Our breathing gets restricted and we can't relax and recover. Mm. So it's not, I go for a lymphatic massage and that solves all my problems because it might, again, from a stress perspective, it's going to solve you feeling good just that day. But then what happens? You just keep going back to have your same treatment. And that treatment, because the more you do it, will get less and less profound. When you first go for a lymphatic treatment, it's like, wow, oh my God, I'm like two inches smaller in my waist. And then, but then you've got rid of that and potentially you don't need to go back and have another one. And if you do, you're like, oh, the results really aren't there anymore. Mm -hmm. And then most therapists don't stop talking. I don't, I have a silence policy because I want people to breathe. And what ends up happening is, again, it's like the escapism from our body. Instead of people focusing on their body, they're talking about their curtains, their holidays, their boyfriends. In actual fact, we've lost the magic of, again, tuning in to our body. What are we uncomfortable with? Where are you uncomfortable where I touch you? What texture of touch makes you feel uncomfortable, which makes you feel peaceful? We're not gathering any data because everyone's just waffling on Mm. superficially. So true. <laughs> Whenever I have treatments, I'm always like, please don't talk to me. Yeah, even when I go and get waxing done, I go, I'm just going to close my eyes and do some breath work. Yeah. Because actually, I'm. this is a really good time. We don't, I mean, if we live in London, it's very hard to take a deep breath. I mean, if I took a deep breath on the tube, people will look at you funny. Yeah. So I'm habitually, based on my environment, a, a small breather. Mm. You know, I, we don't... <sighs> Yeah, we don't breathe. Yeah, and so, I can do that in the public if I'm we'll like, sure. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's an environment, we are stressed based on our environment in London anyway. Mm. So add, keep adding all of these things to the bucket. Most of us are stressed. And how do we get out of that for a while? And what is that to you? You know, mm. and, and that's part of your own uh, self-discovery. You might do something for me and it leads you to something else. But in trying opens up your own path in doing new things opens up your own path and it will take you on its own journey yeah so so true I now want to talk about lymph and sex drive and if there's a correlation between the two yeah massively again blood flow (laughs) so from a guy's perspective they need to to get a hard on they need blood flow so as men are getting older and strangely in this day and age, more men are having issues with in and around that area. 
um generally like stagnation attractiveness like poor hygiene habits and tastes and smells all of these things are related to how much toxins are sitting in your system because if your cells and tissues are bathing in toxic substances you're not gonna taste good you're not gonna feel good and it's again from a brain perspective you're gonna have brain fog and be in a low mood if you've got loads of toxins in your brain so it's like yeah. very you know there's a huge connection between that let alone the fact that if your partner doesn't taste very nice if you're you know all of these bonding things like they smell the toilet out if they stay over they're all things that end up kind of turning us off yeah so we kind of need to have a a clean bright happy kind of system in order to then thrive from a sexual perspective so true because i think you often hear girls and females talking about lymphatic drainage and lymphatic drainage massages, but often not guys. Mm. But actually, I think it's probably because you mentioned from an aesthetic perspective, girls are like, oh, I'm bloated. I want to get rid of the water weight. Whereas actually, I think it's just as important for men and women. Um, yeah, a lot. I have a lot of guys come for treatments. This is a funny thing, actually, because I actually think guys are just secretly doing loads of treatments and just ahead of women. They just don't talk about it. I, I feel like guys are just... they men are great at self-regulating they're naturally selfish and they'll always put themselves first and that like they will always put themselves first they and that i feel like they're ending up looking better than most women these days because they're they might not tell you they're going for treatments but they're going for treatments that is really really <laughs> interesting but i feel like women hold more water retention is that true but again women are naturally from a brain perspective women are naturally more worry more and it's just in our so we're going to be worried, slightly more anxious. Men just don't. Like, you need to tell a guy, like, ten times before he'll remember what you said. Mm. And But we're going, He's. We've. I've told him once, he won't listen. Mm. But in actual fact, a guy needs to be told uh, quite a few times because he's just not stressing about things enough. And there's a reason why women are the main carers of things because we're just more responsible. Yeah. We'll be like, go and get this checked. Go and get this. We're just on it more so therefore our stress levels are higher but again with a nervous six this is more nervous system so a lot of women will say oh i'm very bloated and if you press into their belly there's not that much tension if you press behind the back of the ears that they're, they're very tight there and when you look at the vagus nerve the vagus nerve runs down to here all the way down to your belly so if this nerve has poor blood supply poor oxygen there isn't going to be an issue with digestion, let alone there's poor breathing. So if I'm always doing things to please other people. God, I feel a little bit tense. This is all locked down. So of course you're going to have an issue with your gut. It's yeah. got nothing to do with your nutrition, got nothing to do with anything else other than the fact that your body is stressed out. But we are, you know, we are stressed by nature. Yeah, that honestly sounds a bit like me. I was about to talk about like the lymph and gut health, but it's true when you're, that's why they say don't eat if you're stressed or anxious because you're not going to digest your food properly. Yeah, everything's a blood flow issue. So that's mm. the huge thing. There's, there's, there's poor blood flow in an area. It can't move effectively. You get everything gets stuck. But your diet, you've got your immune, most of your lymph lives in your gut. Your biggest lymph node is in there. You've got your organs sitting underneath there. We don't really breathe enough. We then hate the area. <laughs> we hate our tummies and we hate this and we hate that. So how much thriving is going to happen in that area, let alone we're, we're kind of sitting down. We're not moving as much as we used to because we can get Uber. We don't have to walk to McDonald's anymore. <laughs> and there's this whole thing of like this accumulation of kind of, down like the temperature and the you know how many people massage their gut mm. and there's all our emotions on the front of the body and that's why a lot of massages are done on the back of the body because it's very easy and there's no emotion they turn someone over and start pressing in and around these areas this is where again like eastern medicine this is where lung one is and this is where like fear and all the suppressions of all of our emotions are in the front of our body so our organs are related to our emotions so the massage therapist doesn't want you breaking down in tears so in the spa because they've got another appointment afterwards so it's much easier to rub your back you feel good for an hour or so but we're not really addressing any issues that's why you could go to a breath work workshop someone starts to breathe deeper and they burst into tears why because it's a suppression of space 
So I always say to like calm the body, then move the fluids. You have to create space. So where lymphatic drainage might just be moving fluids, which again is another kind of like gimmicky response to the lymphatic system, like Brazilian drainage. Mm -hmm. But your body knows how to drain fluids and where. What we actually need to do is get into the choke points of the body, the restricted points, and open those up. When we open those up, the bad thing is that when we make space, things drop in. And that might have been sitting there for two years that way. So it drops into your bloodstream. What do you feel? Terrible. Headache. Low mood. So that's what a detox response is. A bad detox response from a treatment is you re putting toxins, moving toxins into your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. But is there a point in me doing that treatment to you if you're dehydrated and you don't poo? You're just going to feel bad. Mm. Where do we go from there? Yeah. So most people aren't, most treatments you go to are just basic treatments to make you feel good for the hour because no one wants to take responsibility for what happens if they do a deeper treatment. And do you, can you even be bothered to deal with that yourself? Can you be bothered to address your responsibility in your own health? No, so if everyone just sweeps all that under the carpet, just do your nice treatment, oh yeah, I feel good. And then you go out and have a glass of wine or a piece of bread and you're bloated again. Yeah. Is this issue getting worse? No, I just think we're more indulgently aware, whereas most people would, you know, it's like, you know, my nan's generation didn't talk about pre-menopause and every, every other thing. They just got on with it. True. So, um, but I think we're also more exposed to, you know, there's food everywhere, there's more toxins everywhere, there's more everything's you know it's creams i mean they're just full of toxins aren't they we've got scanner things now on our phone and it's like mm. we're being told to put on you know i often struggle with like uh you know deodorants and stuff in gyms and things like that. i think someone won't use a microwave yet they're spraying deodorant underneath their arm and i'm like it's yeah. just complete we're, we're being sold to 24 7 but no one's kind of logically thinking about you know, how are you doing that? And then you're against microwaves or how are you doing spraying your armpits with toxic substances straight into your lymph nodes? And then you're worried about, um, oh, I'm not gonna eat that protein bar because it's got toxins in. Yeah. It's it's all a bit silly Completely. for me. And I struggle with the kind of the superficial um, kind of fashion level because no one's, but then no one's willing to actually go, well, yeah, from a realistic point of view, if I had to wear a shirt every day, a, a coloured shirt, you know, how does that, well, I need to put deodorant on. Right, okay, but do you need to do it at the weekend? Or, mm. you know, there is other there is other products out now, but they might not, you know, I kind of sweat, I do put a basic stick on, mm. but I mean, I couldn't do that if I wore a shirt every day because I'm generally, I'm sweating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Generally. So it's like, okay, where can I do things? But then again what what where are those toxic substances sitting in my system and again can i how do i get them out so what is the link between food alcohol on our bodies in terms of with the lymphatic system <clears throat> with the toxins why why aren't they great what 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 happens i think there's no such thing as good and bad i, I don't I, it's it's literally like are you can you get waste out of your body and and that and over time just because your body gets more and more waste it's like um if i gave you a sheet of a4 paper and said can you um what do you do? when you know when you put it through a thing, like a shredder like a shredder and i said to you here's a hundred sheets can you shred them by the end of the day and then when i got to the end of the day you'd done half and then tomorrow i said can you do another one and you were like i've got yesterday's and if you think of that fish tank it's the accumulation of waste over time so of course in your 20s you didn't have a lot of waste in your 30s you've got a little bit more and as you get older you're accumulating more waste hence your system isn't working as well so this lymphatic system is operating now at 80 percent now at 60 percent now you're just swollen and you kind of don't know why but because you should be able to have a drink and the, and that not affect you yeah right and you should be able to eat all sorts of different foods because there's no good and bad foods mm. like i always say waste out and then nutrients in so don't but we're, we're all so concerned with what we're putting in our system and less concerned about getting it out and actually we should be thinking about it waste out then nutrients in mm. so it's always there do i start how are you getting waste out of your body? Are all those things working? And most people, I worked with a woman, a young woman and an older woman, both had uh, had been diagnosed with uh, chronic fatigue. 
uh, the older woman was very swollen, bigger, and and the and kind of super tired. But she also wasn't doing. She wasn't moving. She wasn't sweating. She wasn't breathing. So I'm like, right, well, we have to start there. And the younger girl, when I spoke to her, she had been diagnosed for two years, so she does everything very slowly. And I said, for me, I can't feel any like lethargy, like lethargicness from you. I'm very good with people's bodies. Mm. I said to her, my advice, if you want to take it, is spend a week with me. And I basically got her jumping around and she was like, my life changed. Because what, what I'm looking at is the four main elements of what, how are you moving waste out of your system? And most people are not doing one or two. Mm. So if you've got say four, like, um, are you peeing? Are you pooing? Are you sweating? And are you breathing? Most people are not doing two. Mm. So before we think about what food shall I eat, what routines, you know, I'm looking at the waste out. It doesn't matter any, and most other things won't matter if you get that in place. Yeah. Then you've got to build on what's your, how do you look after yourself? Are you in the right? It's all kind of like the responsibility on you, but mm. we are so used to being sold things now. Like people are shocked when I'm not upselling to them. I'm like, no, you need to go off and do it. They're like, can I not come back and see you? I'm like, no, I don't, no, no, yeah. no. I haven't got any supplements for you. No, I've got no quick fixes for you. You need to do it. I guess it's not sustainable otherwise. It's, it's stagnant is yeah. what it is. It's like we get so stagnant in things. It's like, oh, I take this thing and this works. Well, it will work for, it's like food intolerance tests. And you might be intolerant to that. It will last about two weeks. And after that, you won't be. And people carry it on for like two years. I can't eat this. I'm like, I guarantee you start having that now and yeah. you'll be fine. Oh, I am fine. But have we looked at, have you improved your waste out system? Mm. How often do you work on your lymphatic system? Um, I, so I love lymph work, but because from a, from a me perspective, it's more self massage because I, my lymph is, my lymph nodes and the tightest tension in my body no longer exists. It might just come along, I'll feel it. So if I don't do some work on myself after three or four days, I'll start to get a little bit of tension in my shoulders, in my neck. I've learned that that's my cue that I'm, I've either done too many things that make me like this, cause I'm just naturally like that as a person. I'm very guarded, very, oh, I've, but I do push myself out there. So then mm. I need to retreat for a while, right? Mm. Um, so for me, it's more the self massage and self touch because it's self regulating. As soon as I'm calmer, everything's moving because I restrict my fluids because I'm tight and tense. Mm. I unrestrict, I'm my fluids are moving. Okay, interesting. So it's it's about the connection between is it a nervous system issue? Is it a waste out issue? Is it a blood flow issue? But doing my lymph work corrects all of those things because in the same areas where there's lymph there's blood flow choke points there's nerve big huge nerve bundles so when we work lymph we basically work everything and your job is to identify where in your body do you feel tightness and tension where does it when does it if i release it does it come back and when and mm. how long does that take and if i press around around my because you've got your belly button and you've got your small intestines right underneath your belly button. And that, that those loads of toxins that build up there because it's got to be pushed into your large intestines to poo it out. Mm. And so if I press in and around there and it's very tense, which spots? So I've got like a clock spots. And then I can make some notes. Oh, spot number 3 p.m. seems to always get tight. Why is that? So there's a so your blood flow comes down, splits off at your belly button to go down your legs. Mm. So potentially you might have an injury or a potential injury on your left side, maybe. Do you see what I mean? So you Completely. start to build a connection between most people, they'll come and say, I've got say as they said to me, I've got a knee issue, an ankle issue. I could press into the groin and you can feel your blood flow, pump, pump, pump the weaker blood flow side will be the side that they've got an injury on or the pain. And you pump more blood flow to that area, the pain goes. My God, it's basically a massive journey of like self-discovery and really understanding But it's body. very simple. And then you realize, wow, 
Why is the doctor not doing that? Well, I was just about to say all that. And this. the doctors used to touch your... So if you had a cold, the doctors would norm, would then used to touch you and say, oh, your lymph nodes are swollen. Because it's okay for your lymph nodes to be swollen. They're everywhere in your body. We've got loads of lymph nodes, but we've got massive clusters of lymph nodes in the main areas that I work. We've got over like 700 plus lymph nodes and they're all cleaning and protecting us. Mm. So when a lymph node is swollen someone go oh you've got an infection because your lymph nodes are swollen you can feel it but now we don't get touched and they'd also be checking your pulse because if there's a weak pulse that's going to affect a lot of the body it is so fascinating like honestly coming into this conversation i just thought like oh we're just gonna talk about why everyone needs a lymphatic drainage massage to get rid of the water retention yeah. we all hold a bit of water oh it would be so good if it was that easy it, right? yeah but actually if i could everyone, just go to do a few techniques yeah like round gonna... like this and you're good to go <laughs> like actually it's so much deeper than that and unfortunately everyone, like with all things yeah and yeah. everyone listening needs to now be thinking about their body and getting to know their body better and touching. So I think we're going to do a, another yeah. kind of bonus episode and we're going to go through the whole exercises. So I'm really looking forward to that. But Carly, thank you so much. I do have a final question, yeah. which is what would your last meal be? I ask everyone this. So it's kind of just the Ooh, one to finish off. Maybe like a bur- big fat burger. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Would big there be a meat, starter? Like one with extra meat. Extra, extra. <laughs> what do they call that? Like the double? Yeah, it's like, like a big, double. Big meaty. Amazing. Yeah. Would there be a yeah. starter? Uh, maybe like a chocolate milkshake. Oh my could God, I love that. That could be a starter. <laughs> and would there be a dessert? Or would that be the dessert um, as well? What would I like for dessert? Maybe like a big bag of pick and mix. I, I like love to. it. So we've got chocolate milkshake, a big, big burger and pick and mix. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And then a quick drainage to get rid of all yeah. the toxins. <laughs> well, we won't eat it, we'll be dead. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> no need to write that point. <laughs> I love it. Well, Carly, thank you so, so much. No I'm problem. so excited to hear your steps after this. Um, so anyone listening, yeah, make sure to stay tuned for the next part where we'll go through all the Woo-hoo. steps. Woohoo. <laughs>